Welcome to Champions Mojo Weekly Podcast with your hosts, Kelly Palace and Maria Parker, where you'll hear authentic, entertaining stories, tips, lessons, and wisdom from champions to inspire, motivate, and educate you. You'll get the tools you need for becoming a true champion in your own life. And now, your host, Kelly Palace. Hello, friends. Welcome to our Champions Mojo Podcast, where I am co-hosting with Maria Parker, And we're really excited about this podcast. As the title of the show actually says, it's going to be Mindset, Motivation, and More. We're going to have special guests, and we're going to be part interview, part conversational, part educational. And some of the topics that we are going to hit on are going to be overcoming adversity, confidence, persistence, anxiety, uh, performance, motivation, attitude, fitness, weight loss, nutrition, meditation, ASMR. Stay tuned for that one. It's one of my new favorite techniques for uh, helping performance. Time management, stress reduction, grit, positive emotions, friendships, relationships, and marriage, and more. So Maria and I are sisters-in-law, and we have a unique connection of both being world record-holding masters um, athletes. Actually, Maria's more than master's elite world record holder. She holds world records in all ages. Um, and we're successful businesswomen. We're both social activists creating our own charities. And um, most importantly, we are best friends. So I am super excited uh, that this is going to be our first episode. And we thought it would be kind of cool for you guys to get a little background on us first and introduce each other. So without further delay, Maria, um, welcome. And how are you feeling about launching our podcast? Oh, thank you so much, Kelly. I'm delighted that you invited me to do this. Kelly and I have been having these conversations, helping and encouraging one another uh, to grow athletically and personally for years. And it's it's really exciting to think that uh, we can share some of the things that we've encouraged one another with with other people. So I'm, I'm really flattered and excited to be part of this. Um, we've both been interested in self development. I met Kelly when I came into her family 34 years ago, and she really was my mentor and and helped me grow into the person that I am today. She's had probably one of the most profound impacts on my life. Um, than anybody has had. So um, it's it's particularly wonderful to be doing this with her. Um, we're both interested in how to be better people, and we're interested in, you know, what does it mean to be a good person? Uh, and we've learned a lot, and we're still learning, and we're excited about um, about continuing that process. So let me just tell you about Kelly. Kelly is a current Masters Swimming World Record holder and a U.S. National Record holder. She's a former NCAA Division I head swim coach. She was a Division I All-American swimmer. She was an Olympic trials qualifier. She is currently the owner of a seven-figure business. She's the co-founder of a charity, and she's a breast cancer survivor. Kelly has a master's degree in education with an emphasis in sports psychology Uh, And most importantly, and the reason I love her, is she's passionate about helping others reach their full potential. And she certainly has been helping me do that for the last 30 years. Maria, thank you so much. It just just warms my heart. I'm going to get a tissue out here. You're just such a sweetheart. And, um, you know, you, you, I always call you the voice in my head whenever I'm going through something tough. So um, we have mentored each other for, for 34 years and been you know, so fortunate to have that in our lives. Um, And I hope that I can do your introduction in a reasonable amount of time because you have done so much in, you know, all walks of life. But especially, I never um, imagined that my sister-in-law who came into the family as a non-athlete, even you um, going on to win the toughest race in the world um, after, you know, having your four beautiful children, um, just growing into this amazing world-class athlete. So I, I'm going to start with the fact that you, um, you started in 5k races, you qualified for the Boston marathon, which all of us were blown away because you, you came into a running family 
and and then you qualified for the Boston Marathon and then somehow you just found your your niche on the bike and you started you know riding these these longer races and then one after the next and you start with a 12 hour race and then did the 24 hour race and um, in the endurance cycling world I'm going to tell you that Maria Parker is a celebrity. I have been to these big events and people just, the the crowd parts when she comes through because she's held so many world records, not master's world records, but flat out world records. Um, after 50, 50 years old, she, you know, she's beating the 24 year old. So she holds multiple world records in endurance cycling. Um, one of which was riding over 470 miles in 24 hours. But the the most, the one that um, I think it was Endurance Cycling um, Magazine or one of the top um, journalists that writes about cycling says it was the best come from behind comeback victory in the history of Race Across America. And if you don't know what that is, there's a book called Hell on Two Wheels. Race Across America starts in Southern California in uh, and travels across the country to Annapolis, Maryland. Most of the cyclists that win that have to do that in 10 or 11 days. I don't think I could even do that in my car. So Maria did that on her bike in um, about 11 days. And it was um, truly an amazing story. We're going to drill down on that in another episode and talk about that. But it was just amazing. So she's the winner of Race Across America um, and all the other endurance cycling records that she holds are world records. She's also the CEO of a bike company, um, Cruise Bike, and she's the CEO of a charity for brain cancer research. She also holds a master's degree in counseling. So we are going to have some um, amazing psychology mindset from Maria with a master's degree in counseling and all her experience at, you know, there's nothing that needs a tougher mindset than endurance racing. And we can talk about that in the future. But um, Maria, it's just so going to be so exciting to um, share some of these secrets of champions, not just you and me and our stuff, but um, interviews with champions. And uh, so our introductory podcast, we're going to start out talking about what does champions mojo mean? Yeah, I I love uh, the word mojo, because I think it's uh when I was looking on the internet about the, the use of the word, it was never used when I was little, but in the last 10 or 15 years, it's the, the use of it has gone way, way up. I think there might've been a movie or something. But if you look at the definition of mojo, uh, it's a magic charm, magic power, or exuding influence, confidence, or personal charisma. Um, so I think, I, I think champion and mojo kind of go together. I think a lot of people think that winners athletic winners and winners in life have some sort of special sauce and they would so that the the term magic charm or magic power kind of goes with it but what kelly and i have learned from each other and 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 talked about many times is that i I think that sort of um i think that that gets us a little bit off the hook because really that is not the case the the way you become a champion is 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 by in part doing tough things, overcoming adversity and, and, um, and, and dealing with obstacles. And so, uh, I'm excited that, that we're going to, we're going to sort of crack open the word mojo and make it really accessible for anyone in today's podcast in terms of talking about adversity. That's great. And absolutely true. The, this, this mojo that I think champions have, and this is why we named it mojo was there is something about going through adversity that gives you a magical charm or a magical power um once you go through something that you didn't think you could go through you're tougher you just you know when someone breaks a bone and it grows back it's it's stronger you know when we lift weights we strain a muscle and then it it becomes stronger so when we overcome adversity we we just we become stronger and i think um, I was really fortunate to grow up in the Northern Virginia area and swim for one of the legendary coaches right now who coaches at um, the nation's aquatics uh, or nation's capital aquatics club. Um, 
John Flanagan. John Flanagan's been coaching there for about 40 years. He's actually the current coach, club coach of uh, Andrew Seliscar, who our swimmers will recognize as one of our top national team members and hopefully a, a, a gold medalist here coming up in 2020. That's my pick. But anyway, John used to, and I'm sure Andrew would, would know what John Flanagan says, all the time John would say, swimming is, is life, swimming is life. And so as an endurance swimmer myself, I remember being in the set, you know, in the middle of a set of 10 500s, you know, on six minutes or something. And I just would get to the, you know, number four and I would think, oh, I got six more of these. There's no way that I can make it. And, you know, just, you know, number seven is even harder and number eight. And then, you know, all of a sudden you're, you've got one more and you think, yeah, I can do it. And so then when life would present the same type of thing, like, gosh, I, you know, this, bad thing happened in my life and that bad thing happened and then something else happens and you know it just kind of piles on but you just you just put your head down and you keep going so we want these stories of adversity that we go through to apply to life so you know obviously we have to be tough and overcome hard workouts when we're athletes but in life we just get presented with all kinds of hard things. And once we go through them, that kind of just develops us into being stronger if we have the right mindset. So Maria, um, tell, let's trade one story because we don't have all day here because I know we could trade 20 stories of things that we've overcome hard in our life. But what uh, is one story that sticks out for you in your life? Uh, Great question. Uh, Definitely. uh, We've all, everybody, has 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 had obstacles and and difficulties and um and i think if if we look at them as opportunities um they they definitely make us better people and they do provide different opportunities jim and i read a book a couple of years ago uh called the obstacle is the way it's by ryan holiday the obstacle is the way the timeless art of turning trials into triumph um and he talks about sort of running towards opt- obstacles, which I think is a really interesting perspective because most of us don't want difficulty. I don't. <laughs> like Kelly, when I'm on the bicycle and I'm doing a uh, uh, some repeats, uh, I, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to let myself off the hook. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh well, maybe I'll only do five. You know, but I but I but I but I but once I get through them and do them, I'm. You know, the difficulty, of course, uh, gives us confidence. But I want to tell sort of a more of a personal story about obstacle, a personal obstacle for me, um, and try to illustrate how this obstacle has has made good things happen. So uh, six years ago, my sister, who I am very close to, she's only 10 months older than I am, was, was diagnosed with brain cancer on a particularly difficult and deadly form of brain cancer called GBM, glioblastoma multiforme. And I'll never forget the day that, um, that I, I understood what, what it was that she was diagnosed with because I'm married to a physician and I also understood exactly uh, the likely outcome that she would probably die. And uh, this was a person who, you know, I've shared a bed with <laughs> for a lot of my life. So she's very, 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 very close to me. Um, so in that case, Jenny's cancer, uh, she also has five kids, was an obstacle. I did not choose. I did not want. I, I would have run the other direction, but it was there. And it came into my life. And I, I, I had to... I had to face it and had to, and I wanted to be part of Jenny and her family's journey through, through the cancer because I loved her and I didn't feel I had a choice, uh, to walk away. And so, uh, I did, I, I, I basically, uh, became part of Jenny's family for uh, a year and a half, um, uh, after which she did succumb and die from the brain cancer. But during that time, we shared so much, and I learned more from her in that year than I can possibly put into words in a in a five minute uh, story. But 
I learned I learned about how to deal with difficulty and I learned about love and I learned about um, how good people are who you know how good a community can be in supporting somebody like that and I also decided that I didn't want others to experience what Jenny's family went through, particularly when she was first diagnosed. And the diagnosis comes with almost zero hope. So if you're sitting in a doctor's office and they're telling you that you have cancer, generally the next question is, well, you know, what do I do? What, how can I, you know, how can I fight this thing? If you're diagnosed with a glioblastoma multiforme, the, the conversation goes like this. You have a very serious cancer. You're there's, you know, probably not going to live a very long life. We can do some things to extend your life, but there's not much we can do. And, and to me, that was the most hopeless conversation I've ever heard. And I, after Jenny was diagnosed and it became clear that she was like most people with this disease, not going to, to make it. I decided that I wanted, I, I, I was angry and I wanted to do something to, to make it so that in the future there would be hope. There's so many diseases that used to be lethal and fatal and now are, are people live with for, for live long lives or they're cured. Um, and, and HIV comes to mind and, and also lung cancers and other breast cancers. So, uh, that, the, the, the problem there was that there wasn't enough research money in brain cancer. And so the experience of Jenny's brain cancer uh, got me to start a charity that would raise money for brain cancer research. And I've been at that now for four years, five years almost. And um, and so I, this obstacle, this difficulty of my sister's illness, her cancer and her death was very, very, very tough. Not something I would have chosen, but out of it has come something that's very, very beautiful and hopeful for me. The cancer, the money that we raise has brought hope to a lot of people. I've been, I've had opportunities to, to talk to families and, and to walk with people, uh, through a difficult time and to, and to give them hope. So I, I, I think sometimes we, we do hard things because we can, and sometimes but mostly we do hard things because we have to. And, um, and Jenny's brain cancer is, was, was that obstacle for me. Yeah. And I've had other, other obstacles of which we will probably share in other episodes, but that's probably one of the most important, uh, things that I've had to walk through as an adult. Thank you, Maria. And I certainly was a, a close observer when you were going through that time. And it was so inspiring to see how you, just cared for Jenny and your family and helped, you know, see that, you know, this was something you didn't want others to go through. And, and uh, then you started this amazing charity, 3000 miles to a cure and still do um, work with that every day. And it's, it's, I I think it's really going to make a difference. And I think that, um, you know, the book, the obstacle is the path ties into one of the uh, quotes. I tried to find who said this quote, but I think it's just, it's not out there. Some people attribute it to uh, Robert, Robin Roberts, but uh, it goes way back before Robin Roberts, I believe, is your mess is your message. And so I think when we find ourselves in situations in life where we just, you know, oh, I cannot believe that I went through that, or I can't believe that, you know, I'm, I'm being bullied, or I have, um, you know, somebody I love has cancer, or I'm getting divorced, or I'm, you know, I got fired from my job, or so, you know, I think when, when one looks up from their obstacle, or their mess, and they say, you know what, if I'm in this mess, somebody else is in this mess. So, um, you know, I, I tried to think, what, what was my, one of the things, you know, again, kind of tied into swimming, looking back when I was, when I was young, I almost quit swimming, which would have been the worst thing in my life. Because one thing we didn't say in my bio is it's swimming. I am a swimmer. I'm a swimmer down mm. to my core. It's what I love. It's my passion. I've loved it every day since I, you know, I wore my bathing suit to bed at night so I could get up and be ready to go to swim practice. So I love swimming. And I looked back and there was, there was a girl that bullied me 
when I was in the locker room as a young, you know, eight, nine, 10 year old, that every single day I dreaded going into that pool. And my way to get out of being bullied was to get into the senior group, get into the faster group, because she was in the kind of middle of the road and she was like twice as tall as I was, but I think she didn't like me because I was fast and I was little. And so finally I just, you know, I made it into the senior group, but whatever that is, I mean, today, if you're a kid being bullied, maybe, you know, start some support group for bullies or for, for bull, you know, to help people go through bullying. But my story of, um, the obstacle is the way does not have to do with swimming, unfortunately, um, because I would love to tie it into swimming, but I have, I have a similar little situation. Um, I always had eczema, you know, on and off throughout my life. And as a swimmer, we know, you know, chlorine makes your skin dry, you get itchy, you scratch, you, you know, but it, genetically, I was predisposed to eczema, had it, um, you know, on and off throughout my life. And was given topical steroids to treat my eczema. Topical steroids are only supposed to be prescribed for two weeks, but for some reason um, they are over-prescribed. They're over-prescribed and they're over, they use more potent ones and it doesn't get to the root cause of the eczema, which may be something as simple as just not eating gluten or not eating dairy. But I use topical steroids over and over and over again and there I became, uh, my skin became addicted to these topical steroids to where you get something called steroid induced eczema. And this is not just a little bit of eczema on my hands, which I had, or a little bit of eczema around my eyes, which were probably from my goggles, but this started to get all over my body. And about, about 12 years ago, this was a huge obstacle for me. I mean, I was covered head to toe in eczema. My skin was red and itchy. I could not sleep. I couldn't swim. I couldn't exercise. I couldn't run. I could barely leave the house till I was at the point where they were giving me more and more steroids. They thought that if it, if shots didn't help it, it, you know, let's do pills, let's do shots, let's do something as medieval and horrible as something called a soak and smear where you sit in a hot bathtub and then you get out and you put a heavy, potent, laden steroid cream all over your body. So I did those. I did, and I kept getting worse and worse and worse until I finally ended up in something called an adrenal crisis. Because when your um, adrenal glands are g- overly stimulated with this corticosteroid, they, they stopped working on their own. And when I went off of this stuff for about 24 hours, my blood pressure dropped so low, my um, primary care physician told me to go home And if I felt a certain way to go to the emergency room that I could have an adrenal crisis and die. So this Mm. was a very um, serious thing. Then, you know, like the universe, you kind of put out there, I believe in this. I kept searching the internet and I found a dermatologist in Beverly Hills, California, who had written an article called Red Skin Syndrome um, and Withdrawal from Topical Steroids. And so I kept trying to get off the steroids and I would turn red get off the steroids and I would turn red. And so when I found his article, he had his email on there. I emailed him at two in the morning, East coast time. He was on the West coast. He emailed me back. He said, you have topical steroid addiction. You've got to go off your medications and you will go through a withdrawal. So I went through six months of literally being, um, like my skin was just peeling off me for six months and I could not wear any clothes. I was in bed for six months, did not leave the house. So I, during that time, I was being supported by this doctor in um, Southern California and he would just write me and we started talking about it. And he said, this is very prevalent. And so I, back in 2009, 10 years ago, I put my story on the internet. I started a website called addictedskin.com. And I started getting hundreds of emails. And so I would answer these emails while I was up just letting my skin heal. And then after several years, um, you know, I got better and better and better. I went through the withdrawal. It was like, you know, like any withdrawal, whether you're going through cigarette withdrawal or um, alcohol or or opiates, um, my body had to withdraw from this heavy drug. And so back in 09, we started an informal group that helped others go through this. And it was, it was just like you. I said, if I'm going through this, someone else is going through this because eczema is one of, it's a huge condition. There are 3.8 million people that have eczema and the number one treatment for it is still topical steroids. So 
we're still trying to get the word out, trying to meet with the Academy of Dermatology, change um, the guidelines for using topical steroids and not even have topical steroids used. So um, because it doesn't cure it, it just treats it. We need to get to the root cause. So I felt like the saying, my mess was my message. Um, today, you know, my skin is healed. I'm back in the pool. I feel great, but I still, you know, we started the, the charity called the International Topical Steroid Addiction Network, which for short, it's a mouthful, is itsan.org. And um, we still are getting the word out there that are helping people go through topical steroid withdrawal and helping find alternative treatments for eczema. So that is my overcoming obstacle story. And um, I know, I hope that um, our listeners will have some takeaways from from both of those stories. Um, what are your thoughts Ke- at this point? Yeah, Kelly, yeah, I, I was just going to say that. As an observer from the sidelines watching you um, go through this when I first met Kelly, of course, she was much younger, but she had this beautiful skin. And uh, it turned out it was really because she was on this these topical st- steroids. And, and uh, people, I, I don't know if I understood how difficult having um, bad, for lack of a better, more descriptive word, skin is. So if you have if you have skin that is painful or red or you have a rash all over all the time, it's not like having a, a stomach ache. You know, you, you don't want to go out of the house. You you you're you're what people see is 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 your skin. And uh, so and your skin is your biggest organ and it's all open. And so I watched Kelly go through this and I was I was just just mortified for her that she had to experience such both physical pain and like being in bed for six months and then and then having to as her as her skin was getting better it's like if you if you were addicted to opioids nobody would know when you're walking around but when kelly's you know out in the community doing what she does her skin when it goes through a flare or whatever is red and she had has to deal with that and that's much harder than than it I don't know, maybe it might sound, I thought Kelly is really my hero for how she has persisted because it's also taken, we're on 10 years, Kelly? What are you on? Yeah, 10 years. It's my 10 year anniversary this year. 10 years, 10 years. And Kelly's skin is looking beautiful now, but I can say it hasn't for these last 10 years. She's, you know, it's gotten better and better, but it's been slow. And, you know, imagine, you know, having to go out, out and not feel like you're, like your skin is clear, like you're beautiful, like you're so, I don't, you know, I, Kelly's, Kelly's dealt with it, with it really, really beautifully. I, I, um, and I love that Kelly, you have used that to help so many people, so many people and children too, as you didn't mention, but many children, parents are very concerned about their kids and their kids get addicted to these steroids and, and they suffer. And Kelly's really helped that. So that's, it's a great story about, using what you really have no choice on. I mean, you had, you had it, but you turn, you use that as an opportunity to make the world a better place. And I so admire that. Well, thank you so much, Maria. And that's exactly what you've done with 3000 miles to a cure. So hopefully at some point in our podcast in the future, we'll be talking about how we've um, helped to cure brain cancer and how uh, topical steroid addiction is no more. Um, so would that, that be true? Out of there, out of there. So um, okay. we're going to wrap up this episode with just a, a little quote on uh, overcoming adversity. Now it is time for the quote of the week. This one from Ricky Rogers. Strength doesn't come from what you can do. It comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't. That's our quote for the week. We're going to try to do a quote each week that applies to the topic. We hope that you've gotten some... Um, something great out of this today and maria it's been so fun anything before i do the wrap anything else you want to say or add or uh no i just have really i always love talking to you kelly it's it's i'm really excited to continue the conversation wonderful well me too and there will be more we are so grateful that you spent time with us today and we hope that you heard something that inspired motivated and educated you As usual, for the copy of the show notes, for any links or important information referenced here, see below. Signing off for myself and my champion co-host, Maria Parker, we hope you'll join us again soon. 
and we know you can be a champion. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Champions Mojo podcast, designed to make you feel inspired, motivated, and educated. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Visit championsmojo.com to learn more.